Greetings YouTube, JC, Bad Edit Pro, with a video about audio. And in this video, we're going to talk about exactly how stereo phonograph records reproduce high fidelity sound. The cutter head on a record lathe is a transducer. A transducer is an electrical device that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy or converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. A good example of a transducer would be a microphone or a speaker. The audio is fed to the right and left coils in the cutter head. That audio induces a magnetic field in those coils, which then causes the needle or stylus to move up and down and side to side and actually record an impression in the master disc of the audio being fed to it. If you're looking directly head-on at the cutter head, the right channel audio is recorded on the right wall of the groove, and the left channel audio is recorded on the left wall of the groove. Before the audio is sent to the cutter head to be cut onto the master disc, it's passed through a special equalizer which uses something called the RIAA curve. RIAA stands for Recording Industry Association of America, and in the mid-1950s, they issued this curve in an attempt to standardize the different equalization settings that different record companies were using to cut records. The reason why the curve is instituted is because bass frequencies will take up a lot more space on a record than high frequencies. Therefore, the curve lowers the bass frequencies by 20 dB and boosts the high frequencies by as much as 20 dB as well. Because records are recorded with the RIAA curve, when they're played back, you need to run them through a special equalizer that de-emphasizes the curve or re-equalizes it so that the balance between the bass frequencies and the high frequencies will be natural. This de-emphasizing process on the high frequencies has a side effect of making the record quieter because since the frequencies were boosted during recording and you're turning them down by 20 dB on playback, you're also turning down the noise on the record by 20 dB. However, since you have to boost the bass frequencies by 20 dB on playback, you also boost all the low-end noise, like vibrations the turntable may pick up or feedback from your speakers. Vertical recording is easy to cut. The recording stylus actually lasts much longer. However, it doesn't play back but a few times before distortion starts to come up because the playback stylus actually starts to rip the tops off of the Hill and Dale in the groove. Also, the Hill and Dale recording has very limited dynamics. If you send too much audio to it, it'll gouge a hole right through the bottom of the record, or the stylus might lift completely up off the record, and of course that would cause it to skip. Horizontal modulation, or lateral modulation, is a much better system for recording audio for commercial records for many reasons. First of all, a laterally recorded record will hold more dynamics than a vertically recorded record. Second of all, a laterally recorded disc is much easier to reproduce in a stamper and makes a higher fidelity copy for the consumer. And thirdly, when you play back a laterally recorded record, there's much less wear from the playback stylus. Commercial records up until 1957 used lateral recordings, and mono records, even after the introduction of stereo, used the lateral recording process. When they were trying to figure out how they were going to get two channels of audio into one groove, one of the ideas that was thrown around was to use vertical recording for one channel and lateral recording for the other channel. The playback cartridge would be able to detect the differences in motion and separate those channels. However, we know that lateral recording is better than vertical recording, so one channel would sound fine while the other channel sounded terrible. Also, a stereo record would be completely incompatible with a regularly lateral recorded disc. Playing back a stereo record on a mono machine would cause you to hear only one channel. And playing back a mono record on a stereo machine would mean that you would hear all of the audio in one channel and nothing but distortion in the other. So they came up with a better idea. The solution to the problem turned out to be what was called the Westrex 4545 system. The Westrex 4545 system uses two voice coils hooked up to the same cutting stylus at a 45 degree angle. You'll notice that the coils are wired up 180 degrees out of phase with one another. 
Therefore, if you send each coil exactly the same audio, a mono signal, you will get a groove cut into the record that looks just exactly like our laterally cut groove from earlier in the video. The similarity to our original lateral cut mono groove ends when we remove the audio from the left coil and drive only the right coil. Now you'll see that only the right wall of the groove is modulated. The same is true if we remove the audio from the right coil and feed it to the left. Now only the left wall of the groove is modulated. If we take a mono signal and feed it to both coils, but reverse the phase on one channel, we're now driving the coils in phase with one another, and we end up with a vertically recorded signal on the record. This is one of the few drawbacks to the Westrex 4545 system. It doesn't like audio that's 180 degrees out of phase. Recording engineers need to watch out for that when they're recording stereo records. In this illustration, it's easy to see exactly what happens in the cutter head when we feed it discrete left and right channel audio. Each coil acts independently and affects the stylus in a way that will record the separate audio information for the left and right channels on the left and right walls of the groove. To play back a stereo record, the exact opposite happens of what happens in the cutter head. The cartridge looks almost exactly like a cutter head, except that the stylus is not there to cut, it's there to ride in the groove of the record while causing as little damage as possible. The coils, instead of driving the stylus, are driven by the stylus. They generate a very small electrical signal which represents the audio, and that audio is amplified to discrete left and right channels giving us a full stereo effect. One of the beautiful things about the Westrex 4545 system is the fact that stereo record players are compatible with the original mono records that were issued before stereo was introduced in 1957. As a matter of fact, up until 1970, record companies usually issued a mono version of a record with a 1 mil groove and a stereo version of a record with a 0.7 mil groove. The reason why was because a stereo turntable can play back all mono records with no problem. However, a early mono turntable with a 1 mil stylus trying to play back a stereo record will damage the grooves. So until those early record players were all out of circulation, the record companies continued to press mono 1 mil grooves records. Original Berliner disc records and cylinders from before 1900 can be played back today. And some LPs from 1948 that have been well taken care of track as quietly as they did the day they were pressed. Records truly are forever. I'm JC. Thanks for watching.